Have you ever had this experience? You're in a friend's home or maybe a room at the church and someone is asked to pray, perhaps to close a time of fellowship or to thank God for a meal. Whatever the situation is, a prayer is expected. You bow your head and close your eyes and the designated prayer begins. And then you feel it, you're uncomfortable. You might wriggle with your eyes closed or, or even open them just to take a quick look around. This time of prayer just doesn't feel quite right. You feel uncomfortable. Oh, and then you feel guilty for feeling uncomfortable. But this prayer isn't about you and how you feel. Prayer is about talking to God, right? So why are you squirming? Well, the prayer ends with an amen, and everyone gets back to what they were doing. They enjoy the meal, or they put on their coats to leave. You end up chatting with the guy next to you. He has just started a new hobby, he tells you. He's very excited about this new passion of his, and he proceeds to tell you all about it. You listen to all the details about a hobby you have no interest in. You smile and nod politely, looking for a way to move along. This isn't a conversation. He's talking at you, certainly not with you. You are bored silly, and you glance around the room so that someone, anyone, will rescue you. And then it hits you. That's what made you uncomfortable during the prayer earlier. The prayer didn't seem to be praying to God. They were talking at the group. They seemed more interested in putting on a good show of praying for you and everyone else listening than on communing with God. You know, I've experienced this kind of scenario many times, and I've been guilty of it too. I have been that prayer that I'm sure made others squirm. I've caught myself in the middle of public prayers and realized that I was praying to the room and not to God. You know, I didn't go into the time of prayer with that intention. It just, it just happened. I started to worry about whether or not the people listening thought that I sounded smart or compassionate or spiritual enough. And as soon as that happened, well, the words and the intent became people-pleasing instead of God communing. You know, during my morning worship a few weeks ago, I read Matthew chapter 6, and as I read, I smiled to myself. This problem of praying at people instead of to God, well, it isn't a new problem. Jesus warned his followers against it, and he had some poignant recommendations on how to avoid it. You see, he had witnessed some first-class pray-atters, the Pharisees. The Pharisees knew all the rules, and they knew how to put on a good show of following them. In Matthew chapter 6, and starting in verse 5, Jesus shared with his followers then, and it's good advice for us now, on how not to be a prey adder. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. It says this, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, Jesus said, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret or private place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly." And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. And Jesus continues, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beautiful words. 
You know, these verses are familiar ones. You might even have the King James Version of verses 9 through 13 memorized. You may have prayed them for years. You know, Jesus gave us, gave us a model for prayer. He gave us the ideal time to pray when we are alone. He gave us a model style of prayer. No vainly repeated catchphrases or formulas needed. And he knows the things we have need of before we even ask. In fact, one of the first prayers in the Bible was answered before the prayer finished praying. God knew the need before he uttered it. We'll talk about that more another time, but if you're curious, you can read that prayer in Genesis chapter 24. You know, these verses in Matthew chapter 6, they give us a template for our prayers. Our Father in heaven, it begins. In other words, reverence God. Ask for His will to be done and not our own. And as the template shows us, we can ask Him to provide for our daily needs. And we should pray for forgiveness and for the power and courage to forgive others. And that's not all. As we pray, we can ask Him to lead us out of temptation. And we can praise Him for His majesty. A model of prayer that will draw us into communion with Him. Repeating the words as written, as we often do, that isn't harmful. I believe that God loves to hear us praying back His promises to Him. But these verses are a template. Plug in your own heartfelt needs, your own praises. It's the perfect model and the perfect antidote for each of us pray adders, even the recovering ones. Well, it is the start of a new month. And so happy July, happy Independence Day here at home, and happy Canada Day too. I'm thankful to start this month with you. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you that you promise that you hear our prayers. Father, even when we are flawed and faulty in how we approach your throne, you still hear us. Thank you that in spite of our humanness, you do not close out our petitions. Father, we pray for our families and the struggles of the week ahead. Our loved ones have health challenges, financial burdens, and are struggling with big life decisions. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers for each of them. Amen. Well, thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store for you, you can have hope in the midst of it. Invite God to go with you every step of the way. And whether you're a hesitant prayer, a recovering pray atter, or someone who has never prayed before, I encourage all of us the same thing. Take time to pray. There is no formula or special process needed. Just talk to God from your heart. He always wants to hear from you, and He is listening. And I'm so very, very thankful that the words of Scripture encourage us and remind us of that. We at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Have a beautiful new week.